A great American author once said, without heroes, we're all plain people and we don't know how far we can go. So on this day, the day of the veteran, I want to share the story of a former First Army soldier who truly embodies that definition, a patriot and an inspiration. In 1948, Sarah Keyes graduated from high school in the small town of Washington, North Carolina. She'd grown up under the unfair and prejudicial Jim Crow laws, and she was ready for a fresh start far from the South. She joined the Army in 1951 in the midst of the Korean War. Painfully shy, Private First Class Keyes found boot camp to be intimidating, but quickly made two best friends, one white and one black. The U.S. Army had desegregated all units several years earlier. PFC Keys was assigned to Fort Dix, New Jersey and our mighty First Army. She wore the same historic Block A patch that is on our left shoulder today. Even as she worked at the hospital at Fort Dix, two of Sarah's brothers deployed to fight in Korea. In August 1952, PFC Keys boarded a bus for her first visit home in years. She sat near the middle of the bus and fell asleep as they lumbered south. She was jolted awake in the small city of Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, still a couple of hours from her home. The bus driver was standing over her, instructing her to give up her seat for a white passenger and to move to the back of the bus. PFC Keys believed two things in that moment. The back of the bus would be bumpy, and because this was an interstate bus, federal law should supersede Jim Crow and allow her to sit wherever she wanted. I'm comfortable right here, PFC Keys replied. Three police officers showed up moments later and hauled her to the city jail. And the policeman was standing about five feet away. I said to myself, oh God, Sarah, you are in trouble. Oh boy, so they locked me up for sure. In a filthy cell, PFC Keys refused to sully her dress army uniform. So she stood all night long for 13 hours in army issued black heels, pacing and praying. In the morning, the police chief told her she was being fined and released. But before he sent her back to the bus station, he asked her what uniform she was wearing. I said, you mean to tell me you don't know the United States Army uniform? So he said to me, that's why you spent the night in jail because you're too damn small. Sarah rode in the back of that final bus home. PFC Key's father was furious when he heard the story. The family hired a civil rights lawyer and filed a case with the Interstate Commerce Commission, which regulates American bus and train transportation. The case took two years and the commission ruled against PFC Keys. Sarah was broken hearted. Her tour in the army was up and she began attending beauty school in New York. But she couldn't let the case die. She filed an appeal. In November of 1955, Sarah received a call. Her appeal had succeeded. The commission ruled that neither interstate buses nor trains could assign seating based on the color of a passenger's skin. Newspapers herald the story of PFC Key's legal victory. One week later, Rosa Parks made history by refusing to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus, a move that would eventually change the rules of local buses as well. This summer, 68 years after that fateful night, Roanoke Rapids attempted to right the wrong that had been done to a brave American soldier. They dedicated a memorial to Sarah Keyes Evans, her married name, right in the heart of the city. A mural depicts her standing in jail, her hands clasped in prayer, her head held high. This year, as we've watched our nation struggle with our painful legacy of racism and prejudice, as we've seen hurt and anger surface in every corner of our land, I find myself deeply grateful for a change maker like PFC Keys. When I first took command of First Army two and a half years ago, I'd find myself marveling that I was wearing the same patch as the great General John J. Pershing, our organization's first iconic leader. It was humbling and I'd often tell our troops that we stand on the shoulders of giants. But today on Veterans Day 2020, I remind myself and everyone at First Army 
that we stand on the shoulders of a fearless young soldier who refused to move, who changed the nation by taking a stand, who fought a painful personal war right here at home. We stand on the shoulders of the indomitable and unbreakable private first class Sarah Keys. I had the honor of talking to her recently over the phone. She still lives in New York City at the age of 92. I told her we at First Army take great pride in sharing our lineage with her. But she asked me not to remember her for that night in 1952, but for the fight that came after. Her, she said, is a story of perseverance, not persecution. You will never know what's waiting around the corner for you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Believe me, you would never, you'd never, never know what's waiting around the corner for you. And I'd like to be remembered as someone who helped somebody along the way, you know?